For those women with a thyroid or autoimmune thyroid condition who are pregnant or lactating, it can sometimes be a challenge following a natural treatment protocol. After all, some of the supplements that might normally be recommended won't be safe to take under these circumstances. For example, when a woman is pregnant, not only does she need to be careful about the dosages of certain vitamins and minerals, but there are also certain herbs she won't be able to take which otherwise might be recommended for someone with a hypothyroid or hyperthyroid condition who isn't pregnant. I'd like to discuss two specific herbs which are contraindicated during pregnancy and lactation. For those people with hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease, bugleweed is a common herb that is recommended to help with the excessive secretion of thyroid hormone. However, someone who is pregnant or lactating won't be able to take bugleweed. On the other hand, some people with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's thyroiditis take the herb bladderwrack, and this herb is also contraindicated during pregnancy and lactation. The good news is that while these two herbs can benefit people with hyperthyroid and hypothyroid conditions, they aren't an essential part of a natural treatment protocol. While they can definitely help with the recovery process, most people can still restore their health back to normal without taking these herbs. Besides bugleweed and bladderwrack, there are other herbs women who are pregnant or lactating need to be cautious about taking. Motherwort is another herb commonly taken by those with hyperthyroid conditions as it can help with the cardiac symptoms, especially the heart palpitations. While this herb is usually fine to take while breastfeeding, one needs to be cautious about taking it when pregnant. Hemidesmus is an herb that can help suppress the autoimmune response, and while it's benef a beneficial herb for people with Graves' disease and Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it probably should not be taken in those who are pregnant or breastfeeding. Some herbs which have been proven safe to take during pregnancy and lactation include echinacea, ashwagandha, and licorice. Gymnema is another one, as is chase tree. There are numerous herbs which supposedly are safe when one is pregnant or lactating, However, even though there are many herbs which seem to be compatible with pregnancy and lactation, I'm still cautious about giving these to my pre patients who are pregnant, especially in the first trimester. When someone is pregnant, I try to mainly use vitamins and minerals along with modification of the lifestyle factors to restore one's health. After all, while many people are deficient in certain vitamins and minerals, I've never come across anyone who is deficient in eleuthero or licorice. Now, this doesn't mean they can't be useful, as I do recommend these herbs to many of my patients who aren't pregnant. I'm a little bit less cautious when recommending herbs to women who are breastfeeding, although I'll, of course, we'll still have them avoid herbs which are contraindicated, and we'll still try to minimize the number of safe herbs given. But if a woman who is breastfeeding her baby has very low cortisol levels, I won't hesitate to give her some licorice, while in pregnant women I may try some other things to first to raise the low cortisol levels, and resort to herbs only if absolutely necessary. At this point, you probably get the idea that while I like to use herbs in my practice, I'm cautious about giving them to pregnant and lactating women. Once again, there are circumstances when I will give herbs to women who are pregnant or breastfeeding, but it's only when I strongly feel that the benefits outweigh the risks. So for any woman who is pregnant or breastfeeding who would like to take herbs for a thyroid or autoimmune thyroid condition, I would without question seek the advice of a competent natural doctor who has a good deal of experience dealing with herbs. Now before I discuss some of the vitamins and minerals which are important for pregnant and lactating women, I first would like to briefly talk about the importance of managing symptoms during thyroid and autoimmune thyroid conditions. Let's begin by talking about hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease. It is very important to manage the symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Many women want to avoid taking antithyroid medication, which I completely understand, but remember that it's all about risks versus benefits. And while there without questions can be a risk to your baby when taking the drugs, there's also a big risk if you don't manage the hyperthyroid symptoms. Remember that bugleweed is contraindicated during pregnancy and lactation. Motherwort also probably should be avoided, um, at least during pregnancy, and the same can be said for other supplements commonly taken, such as L-carnitine. So then what else can someone do to help manage the hyperthyroid symptoms? Well, with my pregnant and lactating patients, I usually will turn to the goitrogenic foods, such as broccoli, kale, cauliflower. Now, I don't typically do this with my other patients who have hyperthyroid conditions, but I will take this approach with my pregnant and lactating hyperthyroid patients who don't want to take any medication. In fact, one of the supplements I commonly give is called Cruciferous Complete, which when taken in higher dosages can help to manage the hyperthyroid symptoms. Now, of course, diet plays a big role in the person's recovery, and so just like anyone else with hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease, eating well is extremely important, as is managing the stress, getting sufficient sleep, and minimizing one's exposure to environmental toxins. 
And I will also recommend a hair mineral analysis to help determine some of the mineral deficiencies, which of course will factor into my decision as to what supplements one should take, as well as the dosages. Let's now briefly focus on hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's thyroiditis, as I also come across some people with hypothyroid conditions who prefer not to take synthetic or natural thyroid hormone while pregnant or breastfeeding. Once again, it all comes down to risks versus benefits, and especially during pregnancy, for somewhat low thyroid hormone levels, it usually is a good idea to take thyroid hormone. Now, this doesn't mean other things can't be done to help get to the cause of the hypothyroid condition, but that's, at the same time, you want to make sure you don't do anything that can negatively affect the health of your baby. So which supplement should you take? Whether someone has a hypothyroid or hyperthyroid condition or an autoimmune thyroid condition, most pregnant and lactating women can benefit from taking minerals such as calcium, magnesium, selenium, and chromium. These minerals are commonly deficient, although once again, testing should be done to see exactly what someone is deficient in, as other deficiencies are common such as zinc, iron, and manganese. One can also be deficient in copper, although it is also possible to have a copper toxicity issue, which is why you need to be careful about randomly taking minerals. As for the vitamins one should take, it of course is a good idea for any pregnant woman to take a good quality multivitamin. Source Naturals has an excellent prenatal vitamin, and there are many other good ones out there, and I also think that most pregnant and lactating women can benefit from taking a separate B-complex supplement, since many are deficient in the B vitamins. Many pregnant and lactating women are also deficient in vitamin D, and the 400 units typically found in most prenatal vitamins usually isn't sufficient to correct this deficiency. Of course, unlike the B vitamins, vitamin D is fat-soluble, and so you do need to be cautious about taking too much of this vitamin. So I f would first recommend to get tested to confirm a deficiency, and if this is the case, consult with a natural endocrine doctor to see what dosage you should take. How about iodine? This one is controversial, and if, even if someone isn't pregnant or breastfeeding, most endocrinologists would advise their patients with hyperthyroidism to completely avoid iodine, and some people with Hashimoto's thyroiditis don't do well when taking iodine. On the other hand, iodine is very important to developing fetus, and so one usually should address an iodine deficiency. And just as is the case with vitamin D, the amount of iodine found in most prenatal vitamins usually won't be sufficient to correct a deficiency in this mineral. Now, I'm not suggesting for anyone who is pregnant or lactating to randomly take large dosages of iodine, as this definitely is not a good idea. The herb bladderwrack, of course, has iodine, but as I mentioned earlier, isn't something to be taken during pregnancy or lactation anyway. So once again, I recommend for people to consult with a natural doctor to get tested to see if they have an iodine deficiency, and if so, begin supplementing with a small dosage of iodine. The purpose of this presentation wasn't to give specific recommendations regarding which vitamins and minerals pregnant and lactating women should take, and the reason for this is because different women will have different requirements. There is no one-size-fits-all prenatal vitamin. So while it's great when pregnant and lactating women take a prenatal vitamin, this usually won't be sufficient enough to correct any vitamin or mineral deficiencies, which of course could affect the health of your baby. As a result, it's a good idea for any woman who is pregnant or lactating to consult with a natural health care professional to help determine which vitamins and minerals are needed and at which dosages. To receive more natural thyroid health tips, please visit naturalendocrinesolutions.com where you can get a free guide entitled The Six Steps on How Natural Thyroid Treatment Methods Can Restore Your Health. This guide contains 100% pure content and is not a sales pitch for any product or service. Thanks for watching this presentation.